Hi there, I'm Grace Sullivan uh, for WordPress Hartford, and this is WordPress Management Dance Moves with Calypso. And no, it's probably not at all what it sounds like, and I kind of rethought the title once I got started working on my slides, but it was too late. So there it is. We're going to spend uh, a couple minutes with intros and, and just the, uh, the management part of WordPress Hartford, uh, and then we'll jump into the nitty gritty of Calypso. Um, WordPress Hartford did meet this morning at Hartford Public Library, despite the threat of horrendous snow. Uh, it was it was pretty clear out in Hartford, so uh, but it was equally busy uh, in uh, the library itself. So we did not get to meet in one of the study rooms. We ended up in the ground floor classroom area. So if ever we're meeting here uh, again and you don't find us upstairs, uh, by all means, last ditch effort would be to try the downstairs area because they were. Uh, helpful and kind to let us use that space since it wasn't uh, being taken up by some other event. Uh, pretty soon and hopefully by the end of February, no later, ugh, um, we are going to have our WordPress Hartford meetup taken over happily uh, by WordPress. I have put in uh, the request to have that happen. Uh, they do like to be able to own the WordPress meetups on meetup.com so that the folks running uh, the get-togethers aren't expending out of pocket, which is really, really helpful. Uh, if, if you don't know, um, for, the, for the two years that I've uh, been the primary host of this meetup, I've been the one paying out of pocket. Hence the, um, the ads in our sidebar for the affiliate um, accounts that I have on places like SiteGround. Uh, to help try and cover some of that cost. Um, so anyhow, the WordPress.com uh, is going to be taking over um, our meetup, meaning they incur the expenses instead of us. Yay! Uh, and they will have helpful tools for um, organizing and continuing to keep some continuity in the future. So uh, it, it also opens up the door to anybody in our membership here at WordPress Hartford to volunteer dates um, that they'd like to meet up or places or ideas for meetups uh, and schedule them right on the calendar for a group uh, instead of it just being me scheduling things. You're welcome to jump on board and schedule uh, whatever times or locations you think as well as whatever topics you think uh, you'd like to, to, to handle at any particular meetup. Um, I would ask that you try and keep the location of those meetups, uh, being that we are, you know, our namesake is, is Hartford. Uh, if you can keep it within 30 miles from Hartford would be fantastic. We do have a lot of uh, members that come from far and away. Um, and I myself will be trying to make it to any meetup that is scheduled in our group. Um, so it'd be great if we can have it lo logically uh, closer to Hartford proper. Um, upcoming topics and dates for the next three months at least, potentially even more than that, I'll be scheduling uh, in the early part of this week and we had the topics list uh, was part of my latest emails when we scheduled today's meetup. So uh, you can refer to that list if there's anything that you want to shout out for uh, doing first, let me know. Uh, anything in the comments here or in uh, the meetup.com comment area, uh, you're welcome to post questions uh, about today's talk um, or about future talks that you'd like to have uh, happen. Okay, uh, if you haven't visited the website yet, which I find hard to believe because that's probably how you're hearing this right now, um, it is WPHFD.com, so WordPress Hartford initials, okay? HFD is the airline code for, for Bradley International, so WordPress Hartford, okay? Um, anyhow, that's it for intros and, and welcome. Let's get to it. We're going to cover today um, kind of uh, gently <laughs> what Calypso is, who should be using such a thing, how does one use it, its weaknesses, in my opinion, and its strengths, and a few very brief um, mini case studies. Okay, so nope, we're not talking about the Calypso music, and unfortunately, nope, we're not talking about the C-Nymph who seduced Odysseus, but it should be equally fun. What is Calypso? 
Um, not everybody has used WordPress.com. Uh, either it's free areas or it's paid areas. So some of us have, have managed to have our experience in life with WordPress without ever really digging into the WordPress.com area. Um, but the majority of us will have at least gotten a WordPress.com login uh, to be able to use Jetpack. Uh, so what is Calypso? Calypso is a site reader uh, for WordPress sites. It is a view and uh, collection area of statistics for the word WordPress sites on it. Uh, it is the go-to spot for creating your connections for your social uh, so social media for publicize the section of publicize where you can have your posts and pages auto post to uh, Facebook to Google to Twitter to Tumblr and path uh, so all of that is in there um, it's a place to moderate your comments and to be notified that there are comments on your website or websites uh, it is a post and page creation area. So it is the place where you can come and create a blog post and add photos and create categories and, and get things published. It's also your menu management area. You can create and organize menus, uh, multiple or just singular, uh, for whatever uh, navigation areas your theme has. Uh, it is the place to auto update and um, manage the updating of your plugins uh, with the exception of premium plugins that would need a registration or license connection to be able to update. And in general, it's a one spot go-to place to review all the sites that you are connected to. And how are you connected to these sites? You're connected via your wordpress.com login which has as its nucleus the Jetpack plugin. Okay, so if you're on WordPress.com, you've got all these great things available to you that you don't have to think about because you don't have any uh, control really on plugins. Um, but that series of great stuff is put together as a kit for um, self-hosted websites uh, as Jetpack. Uh, so Jetpack turns on the monitor uh, for your websites, it uh, does things like uh, maintaining the statistics, um, uh, giving you handy widgets, putting on Photon, which is the content distribution network for your photos. Uh, loads of great stuff in the Jetpack Toolkit. Um, and so when you activate it, you have the opportunity to activate the management area, which is Calypso, which also is the new wordpress.com so essentially it's an interface on wordpress.com that is now also a standalone application on desktop that we call calypso uh, and it's also the wordpress.com interface for mobile and for tablet okay so hopefully that kind of starts to to make sense of what it is if you're on wordpress.com you are already on calypso Okay, uh, because Calypso is WordPress.com and vice versa. Uh, so it does also offer the premium levels, and I think they've been around before Calypso, I'm pretty sure. Uh, per site, you can choose to have um, premium or business level. Premium would be $99 a year, and business would be $2.99 a year. The difference is being that you have added security, spam filtering, um, the business level has vault press and video press included um, per site, and you can have a custom domain name and poll daddy uh, and, you know, some additional features like that that the obviously the free doesn't have and the premium doesn't have either. Um, but I, as you can see through all the screenshots uh, in this presentation, are actually from my um, WordPress.com dashboard. I'm still in the free section uh, for a lot of great reasons that I'll go into later. Um, and I have 40 sites connected currently to uh, my WordPress.com login. Uh, so when I log in, either via the Calypso uh, standalone app or mobile, 
or on my uh, regular browser at wordpress.com, when I open it up, I'm seeing the statistics, the notifications, the blog posting areas for 40 sites, which is fantastic. It gives me the flexibility to have all my self-hosted as well as any wordpress.com uh, sites that I have active with clients all in one place. Very, very handy. A beautiful website without an update plan is just an ugly catastrophe waiting to happen. So says me. <laughs> what was the point of, of WordPress coming up with a whole new interface for WordPress.com? Well, I'm pretty sure that part of it is that there are or there has been a, a pretty substantial percentage of WordPress sites out there that have been so unkept for years that they pose in themselves a pretty big security risk for each individual site as well as the servers that they live on. Uh, WordPress websites that haven't upgraded their core for years or even for a year um, can cause some, some pretty ugly um, results when it comes to hackers and spam. Um, so if you have this gorgeous creation, protect it, keep it maintained, create a management plan, and making Calypso part of that management plan um, is, is a great first start. So who should use it? <laughs> and the choice of this photo is primarily because when I mention anything new to my clients, this is the kind of reaction that I get mental image of on, uh, on their behalf because it is kind of an overwhelming thing to think, okay, not only did I have to learn how to, you know, to create the site and create the content and know how to add things and make it function the way I wanted to, but now she's telling me I need to learn something new and, and how it all works. Ugh, right? <laughs> but in reality, Calypso, the intention is to make it easier to make sure that you're not only managing and keeping things updated, but you're actually using it to the, to the best that you can. If your goal is to create content continuously throughout the week, uh, Calypso should be helping you make that process easier, a little quicker, uh, and a little less stressful. So when I think about who should use it, I start from the very, very beginning of people who have really no experience um, using and, and, and developing in their website. Um, what we saw just a second ago, and <laughs> let it pass right by, was the really neat, clean interface that you're greeted by on WordPress.com and, and in the standalone app uh, for creating a blog post. What you have on screen, and actually, let me see if it'll let me. Oh, nope, it won't. I lost it. There we go. <laughs> uh, it's very unobstructed. You have in front of you when you're creating a blog post a very clear um, workspace for what the ultimate goal is, and that is to create the content. Um, so what you're presented with is essentially only what you need. Uh, and so we'll talk a little bit more further down the road about the weaknesses and strengths of this, but the functionality is very intuitive uh, and what looks like does something actually does something and I don't know if that kind of translate translates out loud the way it sounds in my head but basically that that intuitive interface where when you click on something it does what ex what you're expecting it to do makes it very easy for beginners to jump in and say oh you know what this feels familiar enough to me whether it be to uh, Microsoft Office um, or my email system or what have you, this feels comfortable enough for me to go ahead and start. Uh, and getting a beginner to start at all is, is a great hurdle to be able to get out of the way uh, peacefully. <laughs> Featured images, categories, um, publishing controls, and then you know further down you have your sharing. Um, it's all still very clean and unencumbered by you know, the navigation and the mention of plugins and the mention of themes and, you know, everything else that typically is on the left side dash uh, navigation. Uh, keeping that away from view helps keep it kind of out of mind from the folks that are meant to be uh, focusing on the content.
Okay, so for beginners, it's a very simplified arrangement to write in. Clear limitations on what you can and can't break, essentially. It's keeping away the breakables. Um, and it's unnecessary um, to worry about the upkeep of all the rest uh, because in ideal situations, the, the upkeep is being done automatically. Okay, so for beginners, it's a nice... Um, way to keep them focused on, on building of the content instead of management of the, the rest of the body. For intermediate users where they might already be familiar with some of the plugins and themes kind of structures, you can still touch base and create content, review your comments, get a good look at analytics on the fly. Especially if you're on mobile, it's, it's a quick place to look at one site or all your sites to see what, what kind of activity they're seeing today. Um, but it's also a nice touch point for activating and deactivating themes and plugins. So let's say you see a problem and you're an intermediate user who's aware that, okay, something needs to be done and I need to be the one to do it. Well, I can go in and deactivate plugins to see, uh, you know, to go through troubleshooting steps to see where the problem might lie. And as far as deactivating themes, you can always activate um, a core theme to be able to see where the problem lies in that sense too. Uh, and we'll get into the, the themes area uh, a little bit further down the line as well because you don't have full access to to theme control so that's a little bit of a of a nuance there now for experienced users if there's going to be experienced users on here i would imagine it's primarily for the notifications of the activity on the sites because you have all the sites in your grasp and one one stop um, being able to have notifications of, of comments or changes or activity uh, on them all helps keep the rest of our workflows that are outside of that, you know, on pace without having to worry so much about each individual website. We're no longer logging into each dashboard to find these things out, um, which is fantastic. Also, we'd be managing plugins uh, that we trust by having them on auto update. Um, or at least having a, a, a quick view at how many of our websites need plugin updates uh, and what particular plugins uh, are, are due for updating. Here on the left, what we're seeing is actually just one website uh, in the plugin section of Calypso uh, to see which ones are active and which ones might be auto updating already. Okay, now the only one in this sample that's not auto updating is Bloom, and that's because it's a premium plugin uh, that requires the registration code from Elegant Themes to be able to have the updates happen. Now, uh, plugins in that scenario will not auto update. Um, and I imagine that that might be partly because of the way I, I typically set up my premium plugins. Uh, it, it's very possible that if you have your uh, your registration code embedded in the site, it should auto update, but I have not yet tested that, that theory. <laughs> um, but in these cases, you can uh, activate each and every one individually. Uh, so you have control, you have control of, uh, in a granular sense of, of which ones will have what behavior. And in, the, in your top navigation of that side, um, you can see that right now it's telling me that none of them need an update but if it did need an update it would have a yellow notifier there telling me how many of my plugins uh, need updating okay so how should we be using calypso now that we know who might use it and what they can use it for how should we be doing it we can be doing it through uh, desktop in the standalone calypso app we can be doing it on just regular wordpress.com in the browser, or we can be doing it mobily on our phones or in our tablets uh, or laptops or wherever you find yourself opening up um, the browser or, or app. Now, when you're working mobily by phone by, or by tablet, the plugins access areas are not available. You can see, um, the statement that there are things that need to be done, but you don't have the access to your activating and deactivating uh, of plugins. Okay, but you certainly can use your creation of blog pages, your creation of 
of uh, pages in the site itself and you can you still use your reader and your notifier. Okay, so some basic changes can be done from your mobile, um, but the more nitty gritty, trickier ones are left for the browser and for the standalone app. So in, the, in WordPress.com and in the standalone, uh, you have full control of your menus to the extent that um, is not custom coded. So let me reword that. It's not that you have full control of your menus, it's that you can arrange and manage them from here. You can also create menus. So those of us that have specialty menus um, or particular short codes in our menu styling, those portions are not available here, but you can drag and drop uh, menu items throughout the menus create menu items on the fly from uh, mobile as well as on the desktop. Um, you can also set up your publicize for, for the social networks. You can go ahead and connect them and verify them so that the moment you publish a page or a post, whatever your settings are, it can be pushed out to your uh, social networks as a post, an announcement basically. You do still have control of your users on the website and you can alter their role on the website from here. So that's pretty easy. And then of course your plugins, uh, you can see on the fly which ones are needing updating. Now the part that I love is that um, being that I have so many sites on my Calypso, when I have a particular plugin that I use over and over again, it's going to let me know that I have um, four sites or 27 sites or you know one site that has this particular plugin that needs an update. Uh, so it's a, a nice spot to see how much work I have ahead of me. Um, like in this case, in this example, I use Visual Composer quite a lot. So I have 27 sites that I know need to be updated with Visual Composer. So you do still have all the same um, accessibility of the details pages from the repository. So you can get a quick look at how many stars it's gotten, how many um, live loads it's had, what the ratings are for folks and, and their um, FAQ or support commentary, that sort of thing. All that information is still available through these plugin areas. But the biggest drawback currently uh, and I don't know if this is going to change or, or what point in the future it might change, is that when you have a plugin such as Visual Composer or the premium plugins that you can't upload from here, um, you do have to inevitably go to each and every dashboard to be able to update them. Okay. Um, now this comes into conflict with, not conflict, but it comes into comparison um, against systems like Manage WP. Uh, I swear by Manage WP and it helps me keep my, my work life sane uh, with the number of clients that I have. Um, but I'm also paying about $40 a month for Manage WP for the various levels that I use with my clients. I was truly hoping when I was playing with Calypso for the first time that this plugin area would give me some method of being able to update or upload uh, the, the files needed to be able to update uh, these premium plugins. Uh, because although it's nice to know that I've got 27 plugins that need to be updated, it's not nice to, to be limited in how easily I can affect that. Um, so maybe down the road they'll have that, but for the time being I can't ditch uh, Manage WP because it really does that in a far more effective way. So weaknesses and strengths, I've kind of touched on bits of them already. In my opinion, and this is completely strictly my opinion without having researched what the roadmap for, for WordPress.com is, um, you, you currently don't have any access to the nitty gritty or stuff like uh, your menu CSS, your short codes within your pages, um, if you're using a page builder, you're not going to see the effects of that page builder at all. You'll be seeing the structure code uh, within your pages. So if you're sending a beginner to go edit page content 
uh, on Calypso, they might be pretty terrified to see all the, the short codes that it takes to run particular page builders. Um, so you'd have to, you know, take that hurdle of showing them what's content, what's short code. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a bugger there. Um, you don't get any of the premium plugin options like Yoast SEO, uh, the analytics and the little tools that you might be comfortable working in in the normal dashboard are not visible or accessible in Calypso. All right. Now you got to keep in mind that this is the renovation of WordPress.com, which is a world in which the users don't have access to plugins. So although they've meshed self-hosted websites um, in this monitoring and management system, uh, you don't have the really minute control of all the plugins that you've added in a self-hosted. Uh, your plugins update automatically, which I have to count as a strength and a weakness. Um, a weakness because not everybody knows how to tell a, a reliable plugin from a not so reliable plugin. And it, in cases of a not so reliable plugin, you may not want them auto updating without you there to test them out first. Um, so that in some cases can be quite a weakness, but it's a weakness worth taking when the, the, um, the other option is to leave a site unupdated for months or, or years at a time. Okay. Um, but, uh, you need to leave the app at times to be able to do particular things. And so to, to update a non-repository plugin, you got to leave the site to do it. And that's kind of just reiteration of, of the second point. Um, you don't have any access to commerce related areas, um, which also in my last point there is, is no e-commerce friendly controls. You don't have control or view of your sales. Uh, your products, your product definitions and, and organization or attributes or anything like that. You also have um, no mobile access to the plugins uh, area at all. And that may be coming down the road, I'm not sure. Uh, but for the time being, it's kind of nice. I was, I was playing with the Calypso or WordPress.com, I should say, on my mobile phone. Uh, in hopes of learning all the limitations uh, that it might have. So it may be something that you you probably wouldn't even truly need at the mobile level, like literally on your phone level. Um, but certainly I'd want that on a, on a tablet level. I tend to use my, my iPad mini quite a bit um, and having the plugins not available there um, can be a little bit of a, of a stumbling block. Definitely a little weak spot. Um, but I don't know what the roadmap is as far as when it might be coming. For strengths, there's actually a lot of strength. I really liked using um, Calypso and I like being on WordPress.com now, whereas up until now, I really had no reason to come on over. Um, I knew that there was monitoring connections um, and management coming down the road, but I never bothered to come check it out until Calypso. Um, and now knowing that I can do a lot more monitoring of all my sites in one place, that's a huge perk and I, and I do definitely enjoy it. Um, it's fantastic that it's free. It's really great to, to approach a client and let them know that, hey, you know what, I want to introduce you to blogging um, your posts from uh, this new streamlined space instead of from, from the overwhelming dashboard. But it's definitely icing on the cake to say, yeah, there's no extra cost for this. So if we don't like it, you walk away and you go back to the dashboard. Um, the easy drag and drop is a huge strength, I think, uh, because trying to, by phone, explain to a client how to get a photo into the right spot in their layout can be a real pain in the neck. So now knowing that, all right, well, when you see the screen flash like a dark blue, you know that you're landing it in the right place. That's, that's fun. It's fun and it's helpful, and I like the combination. Um, it's very uncluttered, and I've mentioned that a couple times. Very clear and neat. Um, it continuously keeps your plugins up to date, which, like I said, strength and weakness. Um, it's flexible. It's responsive. It works super smoothly on the phone. I was very surprised. I, I wouldn't until now have thought about actually trying to create a blog post from my phone. Um, but now knowing that it's, it's very clean and neat, 
and I can speak to it and have it type for me, <laughs> yay. Um, but also grab pictures from my camera roll, very, very helpful. And so far it's been very easy to teach. I've been able to show people how to log in appropriately. Once they create their wordpress.com account, getting them to the right spot has been pretty easy. Um, and it's very, very quick. The, re the reaction from what you do is very quick and I like that. It doesn't feel like you're tediously waiting for something to publish. So, a couple of Calypso mini case studies. Uh, it's really just, um, quick looks at, at what I think uh, particular client types might be doing with this. Um, the one that was for sure uh, obvious to me from, from trying this out is my, f my freebie clients. Uh, the folks that really truly just have no budget for having me come in and create posts or having me come in and fix things or having me check uh, whether or not a plugin needs to be updated or swapped out or anything like that. Um, if it really isn't in their budget to have somebody take care of it for them, it is so fantastic to have a free solution um, to keep them updated and neat um, without anybody having to think about it. So if they walk away from their site, I'm stress-free about it because I've, I've set things to auto-update uh, and I can peek in on it every now and then without having to you know, go out of my way. Uh, so fantastic recourse for, for the freebie client. Now for a super basic site, um, I'm, I'm thinking business cards sites or landing pages that don't do e-commerce, um, something that's really just an online brochure. Uh, it makes a fantastic way to have some very well thought out chosen plugins on automatic and just say, hey, you know what? It's gonna look this way today. It's gonna look this way a couple months down the road. Until we change styles or what have you, it's secured. And that's, uh, it's a really good peace of mind for, for whatever budget the person uh, might need their site to be. Um, so I think for, for straight up, really simple, basic changes if needed, like dates and sort of thing, um, it's a great, easy thing to teach uh, in this scenario to pop in, check your comments, make sure that any interaction is tended to, uh, and then get back to your normal work. Now for a super busy site, I imagine that it would be a great usage of Calypso um, to have everybody on the team, all the authors, actually feeding in in the same way. That way you're teaching the same method to all the authors um, or anybody who's who's going to be hands-on in creating the content. Um, so they're all landing in the same place. They can, they can depend on each other for answering how things can be done. They all kind of expect the same thing. Um, and at the same time, they're being kept away from the parts uh, that may more dramatically affect the look or the feel or function of the site. Um, for the folks in a, in a super busy site that uh, are dealing with plugin updates, um, it's a nice spot to get in there and see quickly whether or not they actually need to call in their developer or their designer to say, hey, you know what, we're in need of something right now. Um, so it gets to be a nice interface for them um, that they're on daily where they can see when things are different or things change. Uh, their notifications for social networks as well uh, can be very handy for a very busy site. Now for e-commerce sites, being that it really isn't fully lending itself to e-commerce yet, um, for in the, in the current status, it would be more for a review of their statistics, their analytics, um, to be able to really blog on the fly from anywhere. Because all their media library is available to them, so that means um, product photos, as well as blog and, and page content photos, and, and videos or whatever are going to be very available, very handy to them. So I wouldn't write it off entirely for an e-commerce site manager um, or even the team that's running the shop to check in and say, hey, this is a great spot to very quickly either promote your products or write about your products in, in the blog or push it out publicly and through Publicize, um, as well as oversee things like reviews and comments um, quickly. That way, you know, everybody on the team kind of knows what's been tended and what hasn't been tended because of the notifications 
uh, through Calypso. Okay, so I definitely wouldn't write it off entirely for, for e-commerce sites. We just have very particular uses to benefit them. And lastly, a portfolio site. Um, there's a lot that you'd want to do in your admin dashboard instead of in WordPress.com for a portfolio site. But there's so much flexibility in, in the media um, that is possible through Calypso that I would definitely welcome uh, somebody running a portfolio site to, to try it and, and play with it there. Um, the, the masonry and slideshow and thumbnail kind of grids uh, that are naturally in the galleries in WordPress are still very accessible and very visually manageable uh, in Calypso. Uh, so you can't, you can't say no to that really. It's, uh, it's a great way also to get your camera roll from your, um, from your mobiles. Uh, I forget what I'm saying. Your mobile technology, your phones and your tablets and whatever, uh, to get the camera roll that's on there easily into uh, a post uh, or a series of posts and galleries. So good times. And that is all I have for you for now. <laughs> Check us out on uh, WordPress Hartford at the meetup.com, but also on WPHFD.com where we post our slides and stuff. Uh, get involved, you know, volunteer for a talk. Give us some information that's, uh, that's you know, loaded up in your brain and, and uh, we're happy to hear and discuss. All right, take care.